it's completely not worth it because you know to build muscle to do the things you want to do the reason why you're taking this arm you need to What's up guys, Derek, moreplatesmoreadies.com. Today we're gonna to be reacting to a video posted by Dylan McKenna on his story the other day. Um, a lot of you guys sent me this, I guess presumably because I did the reaction to his cycle a year ago or whatever, and then I had the recent reaction to his other cycle. And uh, you know, he commented on it, and we sort of like went back and forth a little bit. And uh, recently he actually won his pro card, which is cool, so good for him on that. And um, here we go. This is the uh, story. It's about um, SARMs and uh, test bases. So, you know, right up my lane in terms of uh, what, you know, I've talked about many times in the past. And I guess let's see what his take on it is. All right. So this is for anybody out there who needs to hear this that asks me about SARMs all the time. So if you're not on a testosterone base, okay, and you want to take a SARM that is going to crash your test levels to very low slash even potentially almost zero, it's completely not worth it because, you know, to build muscle, to do the things you want to do, the reason why you're taking the SARM, you need testosterone. So it's just counterproductive. Don't do SARMs if you're not on a test base. Just don't do it. Okay, so he says don't take SARMs if you're not on a test base because you need testosterone to build muscle. Um, that's not entirely accurate. I think more what he's probably trying to say is that you need a base of estrogen in there, I'm assuming. I don't know, like that's something I touched on in the first video I did reviewing his cycle actually, where I talked about how using uh, DHT derivatives only pre-contest was a poor um, cycle protocol. And um, like he didn't have a test base. I think his first cycle was like Anavar plus Winstrol or something. And I basically elaborated on the, you know, how problematic it can be to have crash test levels and zero estrogen so i don't know if this is like a uh you know tangent off of that from uh my video because it seems like he did adopt some of the practices i elaborated on because in the follow-up video i did just recently he did comment on it and he sort of sent me some stuff over instagram too that sort of implied he's uh, been listening to my content and whatever so i'm just going to assume that that's probably what he meant you know estrogen plays a major role in uh Muscle growth. I don't know if you see my video recently on uh, um, estrogen receptor beta agonists and kind of how they uh, facilitate muscle growth independent of androgen receptor activation and the downstream cascades that can result from um, estrogen's effect on the GH IGF-1 axis. There's a lot of physiologic and you know muscle building dependent mechanisms that derive from adequate estrogen levels. So presumably, if you are using a SARM, depending on the SARM in question the duration of exposure and the dosage deployed um like and obviously the compounds inherent um you know ability to shut you down i guess in layman's terms um is going to depend on how low your estrogen gets because if you shut yourself down with let's just say 20 milligrams of rad 140 or 20 milligram 10 to 20 milligrams of lgd or something you know, your estrogen expectedly is not going to be uh, the best during a eight week cycle or something. You're probably going to have it plummet um, after a subsequent spike in aromatization actually off the bat potentially. And then as the cycle goes on, you start to get suppressed. You might have a brutal drop as your test levels start to get crushed into the ground. So, you know, is that going to inhibit muscle growth? Yeah, it definitely will. And this is where... Uh, you know, the test base isn't just to fulfill the physiologic functions of, you know, your sex drive, neurological health, cardio protection, etc., which is all very fucking important. Um, but above and beyond that, it has a major role in achieving optimal muscle growth during a muscle building phase or even preserving muscle during a uh, calorie deficit, you know? So for a cycle to not have an adequate source of estrogen, that is the main issue as well as, you know, like it's not necessarily the testosterone because there are synthetic anabolic agents that were designed literally to replace testosterone in a clinical setting. This is the whole point of the development of anabolic steroids as well as SARMs. They were intended to phase out testosterone. It's supposed to be, you know, testosterone is the most primitive of the compounds. And these are all supposed to be more tissue selective alternatives that are more, uh, 
you know, promising in a clinical setting to be deployed for the exact same purpose. Um, but some of them are not substrates for aromatase and can't fulfill some of the basic physiologic functions that testosterone can. And SARMs, none of them are substrates for aromatase. So if you crush your testosterone levels into the ground, where's your estrogen? You know, so that's sort of where, uh, presumably what he's saying with the, you're going to not gain muscle. Like you're, you can obviously gain muscle if you're just hammering the androgen receptor, regardless if you have estrogen in your body or not, you can in fact build muscle. You're just going to build it much more shitty than you would be able to if you had estrogen there. So it'd be like running an Anavar only cycle or a Winstrol only cycle and like a high dose of it and crushing your test levels and uh, trying to uh, build adequate amounts of muscle versus using like a reasonable dose of test. Like what do you think is gonna produce better outcomes? It's probably gonna be the test. So, you know, with the SARM, does that mean you need to have a testosterone base in there? I would say no, to be honest, however, that's only because testosterone is not the only thing you can use to get estrogen. Like there's tons of different ways to do it. I actually did a video explaining every single medium of achieving adequate uh, physiological estrogen levels. Um, I don't remember what the video was called, but it was like every test base or something like that. I'll try and uh, find it and add it to the cards, but it's definitely in my PEDs playlist for sure. If you want to go check that out. And I think I went through it. There was like uh, I don't remember what they all were, but there's like DHEA is a precursor. You know, you can literally use exogenous E2. Um, testosterone works, you know, Dianabol, some people would argue is reasonable. I'm not saying to do any of those. I'm just saying there's different ways to get estrogen other than testosterone itself. However, estrogen from testosterone is probably the best source of getting it because it is the one you can predict with reasonable accuracy exactly what's going to happen and you know it's going to be well tolerated and your body is going to know exactly how much estrogen to aromatize in each tissue based on the amount of testosterone presented to it because it has a regulating mechanism through the aromatase enzyme versus you know some of these other compounds it's sort of up in the air what's going to happen when you introduce them into your system so Anyways, do you need a test base? You know, I guess it depends on the compound of choice. Like if you're using, and if you care about, you know, your health and gains, you know, you could still make gains using, you know, RAD140 only, but you're gonna fuck your hair, have subpar results, have crashed estrogen probably, and it's not gonna be the best time. You know, if you do 20 to 30 milligrams of RAD, yeah, it's gonna be dry and fucking grainy gains, but how substantial are those gains? You know, not very substantial. You know, you're, you're not going to gain nearly as much as you could if you had a test base in there, obviously. But do you need it? You know, I guess that's arguable. There's different ways to achieve adequate estrogen levels. And let, I even know some guys who literally do SARMs plus estrogen to avoid hair loss because um, they don't want the test in there. When your SHBG is in the single digits, you can imagine how androgenic the testosterone becomes in your body. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying I know people who do like really creative shit like that to circumvent some of the problematic uh, issues that arise from SARMs usage. So as far as circling back to like compound selection too, like for example, 10 to 12 and a half milligrams of Osterine, is that going to, you know, warrant the same amount of exogenous estrogen or, you know, precursor of estrogen to be intervened than somebody who's using, you know, 10 to 20 milligrams of RAD140? Probably not. You know, there's probably going to be a different outcome in terms of how much suppression actually happens or how much your estrogen levels get fucked up. So, you know, are most guys who are doing SARMs only cycles going to use estrogen or a source of estrogen? No, because it kind of like defeats their the purpose of why they're doing SARMs in the first place which is to avoid gear because they want something that's easy and over the counter and oral and blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, like realistically, I guess the best way to do it would be something like if a SARMs only user wanted to get adequate estrogen would be maybe something like adding in DHEA on top of their, on top of their SARMs to achieve at least like reasonable levels of E2 while on cycle with something that's not going to be a liver toxic oral for the entire duration. Um, or having to inject the testosterone, like that's at least something that has been proven clinically in men to raise your E2 levels a decent amount and not really, you know, it doesn't really seem to increase your testosterone in men, which is kind of problematic and why it's not really an applicable, uh, you know, performance enhancing aid like it is in women, but it does seem to raise E2 levels a significant amount in those who are otherwise deficient and maybe, you know, a warranted add-on for certain people who are, uh, you know, approaching these SARMs only cycles that are otherwise going to not use testosterone at all. So 
I don't know, there's different ways to look at it and I understand his stance and it makes a lot of sense. Your gains are going to suffer significantly if you are using something that is not a substrate for aromatase. You're just focusing stuff on things that hammer the AR and don't have any kind of interaction with aromatase and produce the uh, necessary things that lead to mechanisms of growth driven through estrogen receptor activation. So um, yeah, probably not the best idea to do SARMs only if they are going to be crashing your test levels to near zero. Obviously, you know, it's uh, you're not going to produce the best outcomes in that regard. And that's sort of where you have to decide, you know, how much do you care about uh, sticking with SARMs only versus introducing something that's an adjunct on top of it to get adequate estrogen levels or just like jumping to gear entirely, you know, because it's kind of a pros and cons thing based on what you want to do, I guess, and kind of like what you're comfortable with. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do anything, but he is not wrong in that your estrogen is going to be uh, problematic when you are doing SARMs only and you have no kind of base. And when he says test base, you know, a more accurate uh, description would probably be a uh, base of estrogen, in my opinion. So anyways, take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplaytwindates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplaints underscore more dates. Uh, Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts if you want to listen on audio instead of burn through your data. If you drop a five star rating, it's uh, very much appreciated because it helps uh, the algorithm on the iTunes, I'm assuming. And if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. Um, as well as Gorilla Mind Nootropics and Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas that designed myself from scratch. And if you want to sign up for the newsletter, I would recommend that too, because that's where I send all of my deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology that you will not get sent if you don't sign up for that. And those articles are actually far more elaborate and in-depth than my videos, which is, uh, I think my videos are pretty solid, but my articles completely shit on them, to be honest. So a lot of incentive to sign up for that because you will not get sent those otherwise. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.